All right, and I like to have, and you can see that on my YouTube channel, how to do it. I like to have a um, guide on my palette lid so I can see what colors I have in. And I'm sorry, these here don't look very, they don't look very good anymore because somebody rinsed my lid under the <laughs> faucet. So I have to do a new one, but it just haven't happened yet. Uh, but um, basically I have all the colors swatched out in the order they are. And you know, my palette is circular. So as I usually start with the red and then I work my way, you know, in the direction of the clock down here and end up here. So start there. And then I know what colors I have in because, you know, just looking at them like this, when they're dried out, even when I spray a little water on, you can't really tell what they're gonna look like. And so I like to swatch them out full strength over a black permanent marker line so I can see how transparent or opaque they are. And then I water them down so it gives me the full range of the color. And I have a much, much better sample of the lid right here. So here you can see, that's what it looks like. And then of course, I write the name of the color on. That way I can, uh, I'll put that out here so you can. That way I can uh, easily refill with the correct color. Very important. Um, and it also tells me a lot of what the colors are gonna look like in real life on the paper when I paint with them. Um, so that's very helpful. Most of my colors are Winsor Newton colors. Uh, there's one color on my palette that's not a Winter Newton, that's the Peacock Blue. It's a fairly new color, you know, a couple of years ago I added that to my palette instead of uh, Thalo Blue. It's not as staining as Thalo Blue, that's exactly why I exchanged it. And then some brushes. Um, you don't have to buy like super expensive Kalinsky sable brushes or anything like that. Nowadays with the technology we have, uh, there is a lot of really good synthetic brushes out on the market that are very, very reasonable. And my, uh, I always love my dagger, half inch dagger. It looks like this. What I have uh, really um, come to like lately is a fairly new uh, brush that's called uh, the Mimic Squirrel Brush uh, from Creative Mark. They are very, very inexpensive and they, they're wonderful because they come to a nice tip. Um, and they hold quite a lot of water. They have a nice snap, all that stuff. And they're very, very affordable. Um, so they are, they are some of my new favorites. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I have a, I need a big wash brush here. And again, I have a bunch of brushes in here. You really, really do not need that many brushes. You need a, 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 a big flat brush that'll hold a lot of water when we're wetting a lot of area. And then you need, um, I, I mean, you don't have to have it, but I use my dagger brush a lot. I love my dagger brush. Uh, I like it because it, it will cover a lot of area. It holds a fair amount of pigment and water. It'll cover a lot of area if I use the slanted side. And then uh, when I need to go into like little tiny areas, you can just flip it over and I can use the tip. Mm -hmm. So it's really versatile. The less times you have to exchange brushes, the better. Because every time you switch to another brush, you have to judge the uh, level of water and pigment in your brush versus what's in the paper. That's the hard part. So the more you can kind of go, keep going with the same brush, the better off you are, in my opinion. Yeah. And that also means that, you know, better paint with a bigger brush uh, because it'll hold a lot more water and pigment than little tiny brushes where you have to go back and reload all the time. Um, so I always say, pay, use as big a brush as you can and still get the job done, so to speak. So with all that talk, let's get started. I am going to uh, paint in a little bit of a background before I start painting the, the lanterns. And I think I'm gonna use some uh, French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and uh, I think I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna use those two for now. The reason I have burnt sienna on my palette is basically because it's a shortcut color, I call it. It's not that I can't mix it myself, but it's faster just having it on the, on the palette. And I use it a lot to uh, gray down my blues. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but it's basically, you know, blue is a primary color, meaning that uh, you cannot mix any colors to make blue 
but you blue is one of the kind of like the it's a primary color it's kind of like the parent colors of all the other colors blue is one of them there's three of them red blue and yellow i will um, go into that in more detail as we go i just wanted to get some paint on here so we can start painting and i have two water containers as you can see i'm i'm a big stickler for painting with clean water and so i use one to rinse out my um my brush and then i use my water control station to wipe my brush and that there i can see if i got all the pigment out and if i didn't i go back into the bath again and and wipe it and then if i, I feel that i got it off back in the clean wipe it one more time i'm it seems tedious probably but it's very important to me that I have clean colors. Um, and I certainly don't want to mess up these uh, colors I have out in the wells. Here, when you're mixing and stuff like that, you know, if, if something goes too muddy and stuff, you just wipe it out and you start over again. But these here, you do not want to pollute. And now I'm going to go in and get my burnt sienna. And I'm not going to get too much because the burnt sienna has much more staining power than the French ultramarine blue. And these things is something I know because I've been painting with these colors a lot. And as you go, as you as you paint more, you'll learn about the different colors. They're not all created equal. You know, some move a lot, some kind of stay more put in a place when you put them there. Some have a lot of staining power, some are more weak. I mean, all these things. Your dirty water always tells a story and, and listen to what it says. So you can see when I um, rinsed out that burnt sienna in that blue, what happened? It completely neutralized it, mm -hmm. became a gray. That's what's gonna happen on your paper too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, it's just, just see what happens in your dirty water. Use it as a, another piece of information before you commit to your to your paper, to your painting. Okay, I'm good with that. We're just gonna keep it simple here. And we have those two colors. We're all ready to go. And I always make sure I have my puddles mixed before I do anything on my paper. Because now I'm going to wet my paper because we're going to do what's called a wet into wet application. Uh, and in uh, wet into wet, we wet the paper first, generously. And uh, we're going to wet everything except the three lanterns. We're going to try and avoid getting water in those. Um, and your pigment is going to flow wherever you put water, whether you want it to or not. So you should think about where you put the water. Don't think you can be like, you know, put it somewhere and then you can just tell the watercolor to stay out. It's not going to do it. Yeah. It's not going to do it. All right. I am going to use as big a brush as I can. I'm going to use my clean water. And the first time I dip my brush in the water, I always kind of press it against the bottom of my cup. And I get all those little air bubbles out there are in between the hairs. Mm. You, you'll always notice, see a whole bunch of bubbles come up to the surface. <clears throat> I mean, I don't bang it, but I just gently kind of press it against. Uh, because all that air takes up room for the, for the water. And I want it to not, you know, dis distribute air. I want it to distribute water. So, and then I kind of get the extra water off by doing like this on the edge of my my water container let me see how i'm doing here yeah good and uh and then i'm gonna just get the water on here and back in there and see how i'm going on the water control station all the time to just get that extra drop off that's going to mess me up otherwise and go in between here and i'm not going to go all the way in i'm going to go in and fine tune the edges once i get water on the majority of this paint. I'm not going to paint around the stems. I am painting over the stems. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to keep my background fairly light. And I and the stems are going to be dark, so it doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything. But and they're also going to be kind of a more neutral color. And so all the way out and I take my time I'm painting on 300 pound watercolor paper. Most of you are probably painting on 140, so yours is gonna be a little bit uh, thinner than mine. Um, what does that mean? That means how thick the paper oh, is. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, how uh -huh. thick the paper is. So mine's very thick. So it's also swallows up more water. Yeah. 
Can you see how, you know, I got it? And this is a very important part of the watercolor painting, is the application of water. Take your time with it, because it's gonna guide how everything goes on the paper. So this is not the t a time to be sloppy or, you know, impatient. And you can see even my thick paper, can you see how it buckles a little mm -hmm. tiny bit? Mm -hmm. And yours is gonna buckle a little bit more if you're painting on 140 pound because it's, you know, thinner. I never stretch my watercolor paper, but if it buckles on you, just spray the back. <laughs> just hold it up. Don't flip it over on, on your board. Just hold it up, spray with your Mr. Bottle, and that's gonna make it relax and lay flat. Just give it a minute. And that way it's nice and flat. And now I'm gonna go in with my little dagger brush and go in and fine tune where I put the water. I have to hold it up like this because, you know, I can't, I have to see the shine on the paper. Mm -hmm. Shiny paper means wet. Non-shine means dry. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, a, you know, us watercolorists, we are constantly judging the water on our paper and seeing where we missed a spot. Because wherever we missed a spot, that's where it, the, the color's gonna flow around. And I'm not gonna go all the way up to the edges of the lanterns because the water is gonna seep a little bit. And I don't want any of the color to go into my lanterns. So here, I think I'm pretty good. Am I pretty good? Pretty good. There. There was a dry one. There. And one more time out on the edges here. I think we're good, better get going. And I'm just gonna use my big old brush. And I don't want it too dark, so I'm probably gonna uh, spritz in a little bit more water here. And I'm gonna start up here. And it's gonna dry quite a bit lighter than it looks right now because, you know, I'm putting it on wet into wet and watercolor always dry lighter than what it looks like. And I wanna keep it a little bit lighter on this side, so that's good. And to lighten things, just more water. As long as it's wet like this, you can go back in again, it's fine. It's all gonna to flow together. Wet into wet application. There's that. And now I'm gonna go in and just say hello to that burnt sienna and then back over in my blue because I want some of that more gray color down here. Can you see that? Don't want it too brown. And I, it takes very, very, very little burnt sienna to uh, gray down the French ultramarine blue. So don't, if you put too much in, it's gonna go like really smog color and it's not gonna look very good. And there's that, and I'm gonna go in with a little bit on this brush and just go all the way up to the edges here. While it's wet, you gotta be fast, because all this has to happen while it's wet. There's that, and there's that. In here, there's a little bit here. I don't want any hard edges around my little lanterns there. I think that's good. While it's still wet, I'm fine. Once it starts drying, I can't do this, then I'm gonna make marks in my background. So I'm, that's why I'm trying to do it really fast. And I think I'm good. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna throw some salt on. Let's throw some salt on. It's a little watercolor trick. In watercolor, we are so lucky. We have all these little watercolor tricks. So I'm gonna salt it a little bit, you know, like a good chef. This is a little bit coarser. I have a regular and I have two coarser ones and it, they give a little bit of different patterns, but you know, doesn't matter. And we'll see what happens here. Now you buy that salt at the grocery store? Just at the grocery store. I yeah. raid my kitchen all the time for stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was step one. How easy is that? No. So now you can go and do the same thing. Okay. Remember, mix your puddles first, then wet your paper, and then get the color on and be fast about it. Don't let it dry on you while you do this. Mine has dried enough that we can um, paint on it. And uh, I'm just gonna very gently 
rub just a loose salt off. I'm not gonna rub all of it off because it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough that I can paint on it. Um, and um, I've got a little salt action, not a, like a whole lot, but fine. I'm happy enough with what I got, and I can see it was a little tiny bit sloppy. A couple of places uh, with my lines. That's okay. I'm sure that'll that'll work out just fine. What you can what you can do, and since we used French ultramarine blue and we used um, burnt sienna, those are both non-staining colors, meaning that they are easier to lift up than other colors that are staining. Mm -hmm. So I can just go in here with a little bit of a flat brush if I really if it really bugs me. It doesn't bug me too bad. And then here, dab with a piece of of uh, Kleenex and then here I'm not using a scrubber brush I'm just using a flat brush that's damp and I can kind of scrub it a little bit and this one's a little bit more stubborn I'm not going to worry about it anymore so the next colors we're going to use is for the um, lanterns and I'm going to use my transparent yellow which is this one here. And so you can see it's not all that attractive when you look at it in the, <laughs> in, the, in the well there. I mean, I remember still when I got that color, I was thinking, what the heck did I get that ugly color for? It has to be the ugliest of all of them. Yeah. And then when I started painting with it, I was like, aha, yes, that's why I got it. And of course I got it on a recommendation of another artist. Long, long time ago, and it, I, it has never left my palette. I love, wow. love, love that yellow. Uh, and I've never found another yellow I like better because it is transparent. Most of the other yellows, they have a little bit of white in them and that's why they look prettier. That's why people always gravitate towards them. They look prettier when you squeeze them out than the transparent yellow does. But see the minute I get water on, can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's a glowing, go and it's so loaded with pigment, it goes a long way. It's a very strong color. Mm -hmm. And it also moves in water, I can tell you that. It's a mover and a shaker, <laughs> and I love it. So um, I used to use my uh, spray bottle to just kind of spray out that pigment I have in the hairs here. And so I use my spray bottle also to kind of add more. So this is very watery, but again, I know transparent yellow is super duper um, pigmented. So it takes a lot of water to get that nice glowy, beautiful yellow. So I'm going to rinse it out. And then the other color I'm going to use is um, quinacridone red. And that's this color here. I hold it over here so you can see it in there. So here we have that. And that's a nice, that's on my palette that uh, is my true red. I love that color. I have not found another red that I like better as like my all around red that will go orange and that will go uh, purple and all that stuff. All right, so those two colors, look at the dirty water. Yep, folks, are we on the right track or what? <laughs> <laughs> we sure are. Yellow and red, two of our other primary colors. We have three primary colors, right? We have red, we have blue, and we have yellow. And those three colors, basically, from those, you can mix all other colors in the world. Except for Liam. Yeah. Three. And those three, they're kind of like, I, I, I think of them, they're like the parents' colors of all other colors, you know? And um, so you can paint anything just with those three colors. Now, it's... Sometimes it's nice and easy to have some of the other, like I showed you earlier, the burnt sienna as a shortcut, but it's not. I could mix burnt sienna myself easily from mixing red and yellow together and get an orange, and then to tone down the orange, find the um, complementary color. That means the color opposite on the color wheel, which happens to be blue, the third primary color. And if I get a little bit of blue in there, sooner or later, I'll end up with a uh, burnt or uh, burnt, uh, Burnt sienna color. Burnt sienna is nothing but a dirty orange, is really what it is. 
All right, so let's find a good brush here, this one, and get it wet. And then I'm gonna paint this one first. And you can't do, don't do it if your, your background is still very, very wet. Mine's not, it's not 100% dry, but it's dry enough. It's not gonna run. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pretend as if I'm painting this lantern with just clean water. So I'm kind of painting it following the contours of the lantern. So it's almost like I'm practicing with water. It does matter because if these brush strokes end up showing up, they're showing up in the right direction mm. and, and they're not gonna be a problem. And can you see I have it not all the way out to the edges because again, the water does move a little bit. So I can't trust it to stay within. But I'm gonna start with the yellow. Put a little bit of yellow on. And now I'll go all the way out to the edges. And I will try and go around that stem that holds it. And down here, and a little bit up here. And now I'm gonna rinse out my brush, dab it on my water control station, and then I'm just gonna go in and kind of pull that color out like that. So I get a nice lighter side. My light's coming from here, I have decided. Oh, I forgot to paint over the stamp, uh, not paint over the stamp, that doesn't matter. And now I'm not even going to uh, rinse out my brush. I'm just getting a little bit of that color on the tip. And I still have a little bit of the yellow color on. Maybe I'll even go into the yellow. Dab, dab, dab on a water control station. And then I'm gonna go in here in between those ribs and get a little bit of that red on. So I'm always, can see how the color is flowing? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting any hard edges because it's still wet. Whenever the paper is wet, you don't get hard edges. You get like, you know, soft edges. That's what we call these types of edges. Now I took the pigment and most of the water off my brush and I'm gonna use a very light touch and I'm just gonna go in and just kind of smooth them out a little tiny bit. Like that and I'm gonna leave it like that all the way out there. And that's my underpainting. And before I finish, I'm gonna grab my little dagger brush, or if you have a flat brush, that works too, or an angle brush. And I made it thirsty, I have it I had water on it, and I squeezed out all the water, make sure it has a nice uh, edge, and then I go in into the damp paint and I lift out. Can you see? Mm -hmm. I could lift out a little bit. And then I have to clean my brush because when I lift out, that means that that pigment is in my brush. You wanna get that off before you do it again. And I do it right where I have those lines because those little ribs, they kind of stick out and they'll be lighter. So I'd like to kind of lift out a little bit if I can. And now I have painted the lightest light of my lantern. Mm -hmm. Those are the lightest colors. As I go back into it, once it's dry, you know, it's gonna be dark, of course, I'm putting on another layer. Think of it as stained glass. You know, you have stained glass and you put one layer down. And if you put another piece of stained glass on top, it's, it's gonna make it much darker. And the third, and pretty soon you can't even look through it, even though it is glass. And watercolor is kind of like that, because it's transparent. So I'm just gonna do that one. I like you to be able to see me do it, then go down and do it, and then come back up and see me do it again. Because then you have had the experience and certain things will happen and you, you know, and, and then when you come up and see it again, you'll notice things that you didn't notice the first time around, okay? So this one's almost dry. And as you can see, so there's a good sample, right? Watercolor always dries lighter than what it looks right when you put it on. Always dries lighter. And uh, you never wanna paint uh, next to a wet area. So I'm doing the exact same thing, put water on, and I don't do like all weird kind of directions. I, I paint it in the direction of the, whatever item I'm painting. I always do that. Cause I'm always thinking if these brush strokes end up showing up, at least they're showing up in the right direction that way. And then I'm gonna get a little bit, not much, 
a little bit of that transparent yellow one and see, I just put a little bit on my, the tip of my brush and right away, I'll have enough to go around this whole lantern because that's just how this color mm. is. It is just so strong. And isn't it a glorious yellow? And you can see how transparent it is. I just love it. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on because I want it very light out here. <clears throat> very, very light. And then before anything dries on me, I'm gonna do a little tiny dip into the red and just a little bit. Some of you had trouble because you yeah. really, you dived first, you know, head first in. And so you got a lot of red on your, a little bit more than maybe you wanted. So you can see a little bit goes a long way. Right there, a little bit darker up here. And I'm just thinking about already where my lights and my darks are. And I forgot to do what I usually do is I put a little arrow mm. up in the corner where my light's coming from so I don't forget because I can get confused. And I'm pretty much done with this little guy here. Oh, it's spread pretty nicely, so I don't really have to do much. It's really dangerous to go in after things are beginning to dry. I just want to smooth out here. And you can see I have some imperfections. I'm going to deal with them as I paint it. There you have it. That was mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then I can't paint this one until this is dry. Now I have these two painted. I'm going to wait with this one so I can show you stems and how I do the next layer. So let me start with, um, with um, how to paint the next layer of okay. of there and then I'll paint the stem. I'll do it in one in one demo. So for the next layer of the um, lanterns, I'm gonna use the transparent yellow and the quinacridone red again. And then this time I'm gonna use a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna to darken certain areas. And um, I have them all on my palette, so I'm good to go. Uh, and now I'm going to go in and paint one little area at a time, like one section at a time. And I'm gonna start on this one here. And I always flip it around, however it is easiest for me to get to it. You know, I don't have to paint it right side up. And I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of water inside this outer section that I'm gonna paint next. Can you see that? Yeah. Just put a little bit of water in. Mm -hmm. And again, not all the way out to the edges. And then this time, no, I'm gonna mix myself by, by dipping into the red puddle and deposit it over there and take a little bit of the yellow, a little bit more. There, maybe a little bit more. So I get an orange here. And you can see I'm not uh, fiddling around with some little tiny brush. I'm not a fan of that, really. And now I'm just gonna go in here with my tip, make sure I don't have too much water on. And then I'm just gonna go in and put that color on. And it goes all the way up to here. And like that. Goes down here, actually. And I'm going to rinse out my brush and just get rid of this line there. So there's that one. And I'll go in now and put my tip in a little tiny bit of the burnt sienna. And while it's still damp, it's too wet. So that was burnt sienna you put in? That's burnt sienna I have in here, yeah. So I want one that's not too watery. And I want to get all that water off my brush dab. And I want to go in here and just darken a little bit. I'm, so I'm just dabbing my tip in. Maybe a little bit down here. And I rinse out my brush. And take all the, the water off and then go in with my tip just to make sure that I don't have any kind of outlined edge there. Okay, so there's one, and I don't really like the color. So I'm gonna go in and put a little bit more yellow in. Make it glow a little bit more. Can you see that? I can still do that because it's still damp. There, I like that better. Then I'm gonna go in. I might, I might take a little bit of a smaller brush. Maybe that's a little overkill. 
Um, and I'm going to go in and wet the next one, but I'm not going to go all the way up. I don't want it to touch that wet one, right? So I'm going in and putting just a stripe of water down. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll do that again. A little bit of water. And then I'm going to go in and get that orange that I had mixed over here. Get a little bit of that in. And I'm going to go to this line. And down here, I think I can get down there without it running together. And um, now I'm going to go and maybe I'll get a little bit of the yellow one. Just get a little bit of that yellow. And now I'm going to go in and very carefully with a damp brush, just get that out. Oh, I'm, can you see I'm leaving a little tiny bit of a light area there. Mm -hmm. That's that rib that goes down. And let's get a little bit of maybe the red, tiny bit of the, go in here and darken a little bit. A couple of places, can you see? I don't go all the way to every single spot because that gets kind of monotonous. And then go in with a damp brush and just gently, gently nudge that color so that it's can you see how it gives some shape? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge Light brings forward, dark pushes down. Warm colors tend to bring forward, cool colors tend to uh, push down. But anyway, that's how I paint these ribs on the lanterns. They are the, they're sticking out. They're kind of concave. They're falling in. Remember, they're decaying. Mm -hmm. So they're falling in the, in the middle. And so these here are closer to the light and they'll be lighter. They catch the light. Um, so that's how I'm going to paint this whole thing. And it's super fun. And so I'll do one more for you and put a little bit of water down the middle. That just gives me a little bit more painting time because I don't want it to end up looking super like stripy. And then I'm going to go in from here. And I'll leave myself a little room to the edge. Maybe put a little bit more red in now. So I get a little bit of a darker color here in the middle. <coughs> and then go out and follow that and leave myself that little bit of space. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. That's so much fun. And I'll get a little bit more of the red maybe dab, 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 dab on the water control station and go in here and just deposit a little bit more pigment just to darken it a little bit. I can do that while it's wet. If it's already drying, I should stay the, he the, the heck out. But can you see that? Yeah. It gives it that little uh, oh, bit of does. dimension. And I'm just before I get carried away here, um, I want to go in and fix this one. It was a little too straight while it's still damp. And I don't want it too fat. Mm. See that? And I can actually go in one more time, dab, dab, and give it a little bit more for sass. And because it's still wet, it blends itself. I don't have to work at that. See how it does it? Mm. Blends out, I love it. There you have it. Mm. That's how we do those. And uh, that's how I'm gonna finish that a uh, little lantern for the second and then we have we're gonna go one more time and do some of the real darks now i'm going to show you the stems and so i'm gonna have to uh, make myself another puddle of french ultramarine blue so there is that get a nice puddle over here so does the water just evaporate when you're not using it yeah, okay. it does. And especially here, you know, we live in a very, very dry, dry climate. Yeah. When I was painting in the Midwest last week and, and the week before when it was pouring down, <laughs> that was a whole different story. Oh, yeah. So the climate makes a big difference. Us painters here uh, up in the mountains where we have dry, really dry climate, we have to paint fast. Oh, no. If you're out on the coast or in Florida or in other humid climes, mm -hmm. Uh, you can take a tea break 
still thinks, <laughs> think, still thinks won't you know dry on you. All right. So now this is my dirty and this is my clean. Oh, a little, you should never leave your brushes in like this. It's not a good idea. It makes the handles kind of crack and stuff. So always take them out. Let them dry flat is the best thing. All right, so let's see if we can see one of these stems. I can see this one here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit. I can kind of see this one. Where am I? This one here goes like this, down like this. Okay, so that was that. A little bit of water down the stem. Probably should get a little bit more. And we can barely see you and me both. We can barely see where the heck it is, but it's here somewhere. All right, and now I'm just gonna run a little bit of color in. Doesn't matter really too much which one. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of the burnt sienna. And again, I always go on my water control station. That kind of takes that extra droplet off that's probably gonna mess me up. So I'm just gonna paint that over. And uh, I'm gonna paint it in so we can all see where the heck the stem is. So that's gonna give us a little guide. And that's there, burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. And so there's that. And now I'm gonna not even rinse my brush out. I'm gonna dip into a little bit of, and I'm just doing it with my tip of my brush, just a little bit of the, uh, the French ultramarine blue. And I might say hello to the yellow. Make sure I take some of it off. And there we are, get some of that in. I think I want a little bit more blue. And I want the stem darker away from the light. So that would be on this side here, right? And it'll be a little darker right up here under the lantern because that lantern's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. I need to take some of that pigment off. And before it dries, I'm going to connect them here on the dark side. I love painting the stems. They're so fun. You can't really mess it up. If it's a little too blue, I use my color theory and says, what's the opposite to blue? Well, that's orange and in this case that would mean my uh, burnt sienna which you know I said earlier there's nothing but a, it's basically just a dirty orange I can use a little bit of the red if I feel like it it's my it's my stem I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. and so I put a little bit of that in see how fun that is and then I'm gonna dip into this green I, that I had here from the yellow Yellow and blue, those make green. And if you think something goes too green, what's the opposite? See, now I now I did my little trick here. I ruined my clean water. It doesn't matter so much in this instance. The opposite to green is red. So if something goes too uh, green on me, throw, red on it. throw some red on it. If something goes too red on me, throw some green on it. If something goes too purple on me, Throw some yellow on. If something gets too yellow on me, throw some purple on. That's your complementary color pairs. And now I'm gonna go in and darken here. So I did a little bit more of the French ultramarine blue. And see how, doesn't that make the stem look interesting when it's mm -hmm. like that? Now I'm just waiting for it to uh, sink into the paper a little tiny bit. And then I'm gonna go in with another trick of mine. It's not just my trick, I mean, but it's a watercolor trick. Um, gonna use old cut up credit card or any kind of a plastic card. And I'm gonna use, I usually cut mine, you know, so that a little bit on an angle and I get a nice pointy one. I have the couple of nice rounded corners and I have two or three sides that I'll use all for scraping and doing different things. And so I'm gonna use the pointy one and I'm gonna scrape in, when it's still very wet, which it still is, those scrapes are gonna be dark. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. But that's a heck of a lot easier to scrape in like that and get those nice markings ah, okay. of the stems, you know, because mm -hmm. they're not smooth. They have, you know, ribs also, and sometimes these even look a little, almost a little uh, like angular. 
And so that way I can get some nice fine lines in uh, that would be very difficult to try and paint in. They would get too <laughs> fat, you know? Yeah. And it gives us a nice texture. Yeah. And if you wait a little bit longer until um, the shine kind of has left the paper, then if you scrape, you can get some little highlights in. I'll have to wait for just a second for that to happen. So, and the colors, you know, I'm basically using the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Burned orange is a mix uh, of those. And so I know that by letting them mix, I'm gonna get some nice neutral colors. They're not gonna be too bright once they mix. Okay, let's go in and see if we can get a little highlight. See? Oh, now that I waited through just the right time, I can go in and I can scrape out a couple little highlights. There. And I think I should probably stop. You know, don't want to yeah. overdo this stuff. But isn't that a fun stem? Oh, yeah. Mm. That's yeah. wonderful. Wow. <laughs> oh. And that's how I'm going to paint all the stems. But I'll, I'll demo some more. But now you know what to do here, and you know what to do there. So I'm going to let you uh, paint a little bit. Thank you for watching. Uh, please go to part two to see how to finish this painting. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below on the right. Thank you and see you in part two.